Okay, this is our build to make some uh, scatter train trees for the uh, yeah, for the main table. I think this will finish off the main, the main table. Uh, the first thing is to do is to get a bunch of different irregular shaped bases, bevel them down, and then I'm just taking a hunk of styrofoam that is left over and I'm carving it down to where it would it'll fit into the base. And the styrofoam is there to make uh, like little mini hills or or texture, so it doesn't have to be exact because we'll cover it up later anyway. After you're done with that, I'm uh, just getting some more PVA, and I'm going to glue in um, just some some uh, gravel from a fish tank, and I'm going to do this on all the different bases. So uh, this is, again, it, it doesn't matter how much you put in here, I'm going to cover a lot of it up anyways. It's kind of filler and something to give more texture than just the styrofoam. All right, the next step in the process is to get some wood filler. I'm using Elmer's wood filler here, and I use this basically like a uh, spackle, so I'll um, go over all most of the styrofoam, pretty much all the styrofoam, um, and then also put it on other areas of the bases to give it uh, texture and so that it's not all smooth and that the the goal behind this is, is that your your wood filler is your dirt and you know the fact that the ground itself is always uneven i don't care where you're at it's it's always uneven so this is to help simulate that and i as you can see i'll go over all the styrofoam i'll go over the gravel rocks uh some of the gravel rocks will stick out which is great because that's going to bring out some of the the stone work but uh don't be afraid to cover up as much or as little as you want here The next part in the process, um, I have this big uh, glob of 
it's, it's coffee grounds, uh, sand, uh, some gravel, some uh, some actual rock from like woodland scenic sets. Uh, it's it's basically just a big batch of leftover from all sorts of stuff, and it it works great on train like this where I just want a splattering of different textures. I don't necessarily want a whole bunch of the same texture in one place. And just finding spots, putting down some PVA, pouring this on top of it. You know, uh, you can go nuts in this. Again, just like all the others, you can leave as much of the wood filler showing as you want or cover it all up. It really does not matter at this point. After all of that has had PVA has had time to dry. Um, in fact, I think I even let this one go overnight um, so that the next next stages get some some really watered down PVA in a cup, and then I will s spray the piece of terrain with I got just a, a spray bottle with water, and then I get a brush and just kind of brush on the w really watered down PVA. And the idea the here is that this will seal in all of the the, the, the sand and the gravel, the coffee grounds, the the wood filler, um, pretty much everything. I did get kind of nuts here and I got the bottoms of the bases also wet so if you if you're like me make sure you also wipe off the bottom of the base so you don't it doesn't start to bow the bases because this MDF is pretty uh it absorbs water pretty good All right. After letting all of that dry, um, I just base coated or primered all the, the things in black. I find black works best here. And then I'm starting off with a, a darker brown. Can't remember the exact color, but it's a it's a darker brown. And watering it down, you know, thinning it out, and going over all the the places where I want dirt. Um, you can also just go over the whole thing at this point with the brown if you want. It really won't hurt anything. next color we're going to go with is a darker green. Um, I think this one's a, like a forest green, I think. I can't remember. But again, the, the idea is to water it down or thin it out. And the reason why you thin it out is so that that, that black primer will actually darken your color after it dries. Um, it, I do this next step pretty much before the first color is dried actually on each one of these steps I don't really wait for the piece to dry that way if I want to wet blend the two colors together I, I have it still on the palette it's still on the on the train piece and it's good to go so um, so here's the the next piece so then after that the next color we're gonna go with is um, a gray just for the stonework so I'm gonna to hit up each one of the pieces of the gravel that uh, from the, the the smooth rock 
gravel from the fish tank and I'm gonna hit all those with that gray just to to highlight them to actually make them stone uh, if you have any uh, of the styrofoam still showing I find that it hitting those with gray too also works out it makes it look like all the earth is just kind of worn away from from the rock so it does a pretty good job it's kind of works pretty good and then uh, after that again don't really let everything dry you can if you want it's kind of up to you um, I'm gonna go back in with a it's basically the same brown it's just a just a hair shade brighter and I'm going to dry brush a little bit over all of the areas dry brush it's kind of a heavy dry brush at this point I'm not as you can see I'm not really being super careful about it but going over all the spots I still want to be brown brown make sure you get all the edges good that are brown um, and then any of the areas that I painted that hit that got too much green that I didn't really want um, I'll hit them brown here and then this is also where that that blending will kick in Okay, next color, same thing as before, just with a brighter green. Um, this one, I, the green that I grabbed was actually a really, was actually kind of bright. It worked pretty good, but if you if you do have a really bright next color, just use it sparingly, or else it'll just overpower the whole the whole piece. Um, and then for the stone work, I didn't want to go over the stones with gray again because I think the the gray works pretty good. It was actually too bright as it is, so I took a little bit of black uh, with some um, jet dry and some water, mix all up to make a really thin wash, and I hit all of the stones with this wash. And then I just randomly picked some other spots throughout the train that I felt needed to be a little darker or just shaded differently, and I hit those with the shade as well. After letting all that dry, um, the next piece is I have these trees that, that I thought this angle would work in the camera. Obviously, it doesn't really well, but they're basically just wire brush trees um, that I have flocked to thicken up a bit and that I'm just using hot glue to stick them in. So uh, nothing fancy. Um, I usually tried to find a spot that still had some foam. That way they poke into the foam and then dry pretty good. So there you go. Here's some pictures of the finished products. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe and all that jazz.